want to thank you all for logging in. You logged in to Strong Tower Apostolic Ministries Incorporated. Everybody let's say welcome. Oh. Welcome. We are expecting our great God to do great things for us. Great power and great grace. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. We're glad that everybody is, is here today and we thank God for watching over us through the cold weather. It's been bitterly cold this week, hasn't it? But God has kept his children. And we hope and pray that God is blessing those of you who are logged in out there, that you're blessed with warmth today, that you're blessed with all your needs met, and that you're encouraged. We've seen a lot of accidents over the highways and byways, and we hope that none of you all haven't been involved in any of that. And we hope and pray that God will keep his arms of mercy around about you. But today is Sunday, and we're going to get into the Word. My name is Pastor Tony Hyman. For those of you who don't know me, and we want to say welcome. One more time. Everybody say welcome. 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 You log in the Strong Tower Apostolic Ministry. So we're going to get into the Word now. And thank you once again for logging in. You could have been to millions of other sites, but you chose Strong Tower Apostolic Ministry. And we're grateful and thankful for you. And we hope and pray that God will give us a word today. A word that will strengthen you. A word that will encourage you. A word that will motivate you. A word that will help you to keep fighting the good fight of faith. Please, don't give up. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. I'm a preacher of holding on. I'm a preacher of faith. Please, don't give up. Amen? Everybody say, don't give up. Don't give up. Well, we're going to get into the word now. And the word, uh, of course, this is... Uh, my name is Elder Tony Hyman, for those of you who don't know me, and this is Strong Tower Apostolic Ministries Incorporated, and today is Sunday, January 11, 2015. And I'd like to say happy birthday to my sister in Texas County, Texas. Today is her birthday. I've already texted her this morning and say happy birthday. I hope you enjoy your day, little sister. God bless you. Uh, and, of course, uh, my name is Elder Tony Hyman, for those of you who don't know me. And this is Strong Tower Apostolic Ministries Incorporated. We are located at 713 North J.P. Wright Loop Road in Jacksonville, Arkansas, zip code 72076. And uh, my source will be the Olive Tree Bible Reader, the King James Version of the Bible. And we're live streaming right now on www.ustream.tv. And the title of today's message is simply worship God. Now our slogan this year is worship the king in 2015. Right? So the message for today in January is worship God. Let's say it together. Worship, worship God. God. Worship God. Worship God. Lift him up. What's his name? Jesus. Hey! Jesus. Jesus' name actually means Jehovah is salvation. Did you all know that? Jesus' name means Jehovah is salvation. So when you give glory to Jesus, you're giving glory to the Father automatically by calling his name. That's why he's saying me and the Father are one. They're one. When you say Jesus, you're giving glory to the Father. Right. And I will show you that in Scripture, that his name Jesus, Jesus is uh, uh, Jehovah is salvation. We'll look that up. Our subtopic, of course, is preach deliverance. Focus on the kingdom. I'm not trying to build Hyman's kingdom. I'm trying to build Jesus' kingdom, the kingdom of God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name. Let us build up his name. Let us glorify his name together. Not separate, not alone, but together. And, of course, our street name is Strong Tower Church of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a strong tower. Strong tower is Jesus Christ. They're one and the same. The name of the Lord. And who's our Lord? Jesus Christ is a strong tower. Have you made that connection? When you say strong tower, you're saying Jesus Christ. When you say Jesus Christ, you're saying a strong tower. And the righteous, not the self-righteous, but the righteous, not the unrighteous, but the righteous runneth into it and are saved. We don't want to get caught up in the self-righteousness. We don't want to get caught up in the unrighteousness. We want to remain righteous and be safe. There's perilous, perilous times, aren't we? See on the, on the news those guys over in uh, France killing those people? 
I mean, just taking a notion and shooting up folk. Shooting them and killing them. We're in perilous times. Somebody could have a mind to come in here and shoot. But God had mercy. Amen? God is keeping us. God is blessing us. God is putting his guardian angels around about us. And we're giving him the glory. So we pray for those who are suffering right now through these senseless acts of crime all over the world. The scripture plainly said we're in perilous times, didn't it? And the scripture is accurate. These are perilous, dangerous times because we don't know who the next person is to decide to go and shoot up innocent people. Shoot people that don't have a gun, that can't fight back. These are perilous times. So Lord, put your guardian angels around about us. Help us to be safe and all your people to be safe all around the world. Help us, Lord, to be safe in Jesus' name. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started here. You see I'm doing a little different here. I have to stand over there in order for them to see my image now because that camera has been, uh, something's going on. But anyway, let's move on. My title, Worship God, which means worship the Son, S-O-N, and not the Son, S-U-N. Worship the S-O-N, the Son of God, not the S-U-N. See, the sun may not be shining outside. It's kind of overcast, isn't it? It's kind of overcast, and it's kind of a, a, a drizzling rain and all of that. Hey, we got somebody else. Praise the Lord. Bless him, Brother Smith. So we're going to worship the S-U-N, not, I mean, the S-O-N. Let me get that right. Worship the S-O-N, not the S-U-N. Worship the true Son of God. So that's our message for today. Worship God. God bless you. At our hops in 2015, we're going to obey, praise, shout, and sing in 2015. We're going to worship the King in 2015. That's our hops. You were here last Sunday. That's what we're talking about. Obey, praise, shout, and sing in 2015. And that sums up worship. Amen? Worship the king in 2015. And we worship him when we obey him. We worship him when we praise him. We worship him when we shout unto him. We worship him when we sing a joyful noise unto him. That's how we worship the king in 2015. Does that make sense? So our title for today's message is simply Worship God who is our king. He's our king of kings, and he's our Lord of lords. Do you believe that? Is he your king? Yes, sir. Is he your God? Yes, is he your deliverer? Is he your way maker? Is he your head and old bear? Is your, he's your heart fixer? Is he your mind regulator? Is he your head and old bear? Who is he? Oh, Jesus. 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 So we're going to worship the king in 2015. Now, our scriptures are coming out of one book, Ezekiel chapter number 8. We're going to read over Ezekiel chapter 8. And our conclusion will come out of Psalms chapter 121. So we've just got two chapters, remember, Ezekiel chapter 8 and Psalms chapter 121. Very easy, isn't it? Ezekiel chapter 8 and Psalms chapter 121 is our conclusion. Now, I told you I wanted you to tell you what the name of Jesus meant, didn't I? All right, so let's go to Olive Tree down here at the bottom. And just go uh, to the New Testament, go to Matthew chapter 1. And we're going to show you what the name Jesus meant. When you give glory to Jesus, you're actually giving glory to the Father by default. Because everybody's name means something. Did you know that? Run means something. Tony means something. Felicia means something. John means something. Everybody's name has a meaning. Chapter 1, verse 1. And we're going to just click on the word Jesus. These are the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, the son of God. Now what does Jesus mean? So we're going to start off by telling you what his name means. Jesus. 
E.A. Seuss is how it's pronounced. Can you say it with me? E.A. Seuss. E.A. Seuss. E.A. Seuss. And it says, Jesus, a Jeshua, or a Joshua, the Lord of two, three other Israelites, Jesus, Joshua, Jesus, Joshua. And here's the meaning. Let's say it together. Jesus equals Jehovah is salvation. Did you all, how many of y'all do that? Show of hands. Jesus means Jehovah is salvation. That's why he says, I am come in my Father's name. His Father is Jehovah, the great I am. And his name gives glory to the Father. That's why there's not a total war about power, because when you say Jesus, you're giving glory to the Father by default. So they're not tugging over who's getting the most glory because they are one. It says equals. Equal means the same, doesn't it? Jesus equals Jehovah is salvation. When you say one equals two, you're saying the two quantities are equal, but one doesn't equal two, does it? That's false. But when you say two equals two, that's true, isn't it? Or one equals one, that's true, isn't it? So Jesus equals Jehovah must be equal. There are one and the same. There's an equal sign between them. Can you look up the word Jehovah? Jehovah. And see if it'll bounce back to. Well, Jehovah's in the Old Testament, but okay, okay, we okay. kind of knew. That will take me off the topic right now, but I'll okay. get back with you. Yes, Can sir, I get back sir, with you? Sir. I want to stay on topic. All right. Jesus equals Jehovah is salvation. When you give glory to Jesus, you're giving glory to the Father. Is that clear? So worship the King in 2015. And what's his name? Jesus. Who gets the glory? Jesus. God gets the glory. Amen? When we worship Jesus, God gets the glory. They're connected. And that's what I wanted you to see. Now let's get into our text. Ezekiel chapter number 8. And I'll get back with you, Brother Corey. Don't forget about you. I'm going to have to do it privately, but I'll get back with you on that. Ezekiel chapter 8. And I'm going to read over this and then expound on it. What's the title of the message? Worship God. Worship God. And it came to pass in the sixth year and in the sixth month and the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Verse 2. I'm going to read over it all first and then I'll expound on it. Then I beheld and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire. Everybody say fire. 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 From the appearance of his loins, even downward. Fire. Everybody say fire again. Fire. Fire. And from his loins, even upward, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. Verse 3. And he put forth the form of an hand, and took me by a lock of my head, and the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. Now everybody say jealousy. Jealousy. Provoke who to jealousy? Who are we talking about here? Who appeared as fire? Now, we're in the Old Testament now. So who is it in the Old Testament? God. See, the glory of the God of Israel was there. According to the vision that I saw in the plain, we're talking about God the Father. God the Father. Verse 5. Then said he unto me, Son of man, Lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north. And behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. Now what I want you all to do, let's get engaged. Let's look toward the north, which is behind you. That's no, no, that's this way, north. Everybody look north, north. Just, just to give you an example of what he did. He looked toward the north. Got it? 
All right. Then, verse 6, he said, Furthermore unto me, son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary. So he seen them worship idols when he looked to the north. What are they doing? They're provoking me to jealousy. Look and see. He took Ezekiel up on a high mountain and said, look to the north. What do you see? They're provoking me to jealousy. It says, even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here. All right, verse 7. He said, but now you're going to see even greater abominations. So you, what you're seeing is an abomination, but now I'm going to show you something greater. Everybody say greater. greater. So in other words, it's worse. Isn't it? Do everybody understand what an abomination is? Click on abomination real quick. Let's get an understanding. What is an abomination? If it brings it up, hopefully it's working. There we go. It comes from the Hebrew word tonaba or toniba or something like that. Tonaba or tonaba. And it means something disgusting. Morally, i.e. a noun and abhorrence, especially idolatry or concretely an idol. Abominable. Custom thing, abomination, abomination. Everybody say disgusting. Disgusting. In a ritual sense of unclean food, idols, mixed marriages, in an ethical sense, wickedness. Is that all? Yes, wickedness. So I saw some abominations when I looked to the north, but now he's going to show you what? More. Greater abominations. Now let's see what these greater abominations were. Verse 7. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, Behold, a hole in the wall. So he went to the wall now. And he saw what in the wall? Oh. He saw a hole in the wall. First he looked to the north, but now he's looking through a peephole. In the door of the court. In other words, in front of the church, the sanctuary, the temple. He's looking through a hole in the court. Then said he unto me, Son of man, Dig down now, or dig now in the wall. In other words, make the hole bigger. Right. So it's not a peephole anymore. Right. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do there. So he said, just finally go through the door. Go on the inside. I'm, I'm telling it all. This is what they're doing to provoke me to jealousy. You see, the preacher got to tell it. Everybody say, tell it. Tell it. Hey, you got to tell it. When God gives it to you, you got to tell it. Because if you don't tell it, you're in trouble with him. And I don't want to be in trouble with the king. I want to worship the king. I want to obey the king. I want to praise the king. I want to shout to the same king. And I want to sing to the king. Amen? So first I got to obey, don't I? So the man of God has got to obey. So he went on in. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, an abominable beast, and all idols. Everybody say idols. Idols, idols in the church, idols in the temple, idols, what? That's why he said it's a greater abomination. They done took it to church now. They done took it to the temple now. They done took it inside the court now. And this is a greater abomination than what I showed you when you look to the north. And all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. They put it on the wall. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood... Jezaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand. And a thick cloud of incense went up. In other words, they were burning incense 
in the church to idols, in the temple to idols. Now, that's a greater abomination. That is just totally offensive to God. Amen? We don't want to do that. We want to bring our sacrifice of praise to the king. We don't worship the blessings. We worship the blessed for. They had got caught up in worshiping the blessings. They took the blessings to the church. It's nothing to be thankful for the blessing. We're supposed to be thankful, aren't we? We're supposed to be grateful. We're supposed to be exalting him and giving him praise for the great things he's done. But we don't want to start worshiping the great things. We don't want to start bringing the great things, the idols, to church and worshiping those and making an idol out of God's blessings. That provokes him to jealousy. He said it's a greater abomination. I blessed you with the cattle. I blessed you with the money. I blessed you with the gold. I blessed you with this. Don't worship the idol. That's a worse abomination than what they were doing when they were looking to the north. Amen? Are you reading it? Are you getting to understand? Because I'm expecting our great God to do great things for us. And I don't want to get sidetracked when he starts doing those great things. Start worshiping those great things. We're going to worship him. Amen? And keep the great things in their place. Right? Keep them in their place. Which is under subjection to God who gave it to us. Verse 12. Then said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? They're trying to cover it up in the dark. Remember, Solomon had married all those women. He built all those temples, and he was worshiping with them in the dark. His wives, they turned his heart away from God. And do you know people follow the king? They do what the king does. And if the king is worshiping idols, what are they going to do? Same thing. Follow the leader. That's what we do. That's what human beings do. We follow the leader, don't we? If the leader's messing up, we're going to mess up. If the leader's not doing right, we're not going to do right. If the leader's not praying, we're not going to pray. If the leader's not teaching right, we're not going to teach right. If the leader's worshiping idols, we're going to worship idols. If the leader's saying it's okay to marry a man and a, a man marry a man, we're going to say it's okay for a, married, a man to marry a man. If the leader is saying a woman can marry a woman, we're going to say it's okay for a woman. We follow the leader, don't we? So God says it's a greater abomination. So we've got to make a reconciliation. No, we've got to draw a line in the sand and say, I'm going to obey God rather than man. We've got to come to a conclusion. This worship of idols provokes God to jealousy. It's disgusting to him. He wants to bless us with good things. He wants to give us good things. But he doesn't want those good things to become an idol in our life. And that's what God is telling me. Worship God. Worship the king in 2015. Don't worship the blessings. Be grateful for the blessings. Everybody say, grateful. grateful. Hey, thank you for my car, oh God. Hey, thank you for my house, oh God. Thank you for the heater in my house, because it's been cold this week. Hey, thank you for my heat today. Thank you for my clothes today. But I don't put that above him. He's still number one in my life. Worship God. Everybody say, worship God. Worship God. worship God. Let's move on. Now, going on in the scripture, we got. He said, he said, I'm going to show you something worse than this. Then said he unto me, son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients do in the house of Israel, do in the dark, every man in the chamber of his imagery? For they say, the Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. God see everything. They lie to themselves, in other words, aren't they? Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to God. They start lying to themselves. Read it with me. For they say, right here, the last part. For they say, the Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. Let's so say it together. For, the, for they say, the Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. They're lying to themselves, aren't they? 
God has, God does see everything. God has not forsaken the earth. So if we say that, we're lying to ourselves. And he didn't bless us to start tricking ourselves, did he? All right, now, verse 13. He said also unto me, turn thee yet again, and I will show thee greater abominations that they do. Now, it's already bad, isn't it? And it's already worse. Now you're fixing to see the worst. How does it go? Bad, worse, and worse. Bad, badder, and baddest. <laughs> so you always saw bad when you looked to the north. Then you saw worse when you looked through the peephole. Now you're finna see the worst. You say the greatest abomination. Is that what it says? Then it say greatest? Go back up, 13. Turn ye yet again, and I will show thee greater abominations that they do, which is greater than the last. So verse 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north again. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this? In other words, Tammuz is a god. Click on that. Weeping for Tammuz. Why aren't you crying out to the king? Why aren't you crying out to God? You're weeping to the wrong God. Who is Tammuz? Tammuz. And it says, Tammuz is of uncertain devoration, a Phoenician deity. Tammuz. Tammuz equals sprout of life, a Sumerian deity or food or vegetation. It was, go back up, a Phoenician deity. Deity means what? Idol. A god. They're weeping to an idol. He said there was a worse thing, wasn't it? Women crying to the wrong king. Cry out to Jesus. Cry out to the king. Cry out to the true God. God is saying, this makes me jealous. You broke, broke, broke me to jealous how many times? Three times. Something they were doing in the north. Something they was doing in the temple. Now the women crying for the wrong God. God has got jealous. Now let's see what it goes on to say in verse 16. Oh, verse 15. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn ye yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. You mean there's even more? Everybody say more. more. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. Now this is the inner court of the temple. This is inside the sanctuary. This is inside the church, so to speak. The inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men. That's twenty-five, right? With their backs toward the temple. Let turn their back on God. Turn their backs toward the temple. And what did they do? Their faces toward the east, and they worship the S U N. Worship the sun toward the east. God said that is the worst thing you can do. All these abominations that I've shown you, the worst thing you can do is worship the S-U-N. Why? Because I'm the true light of the world, not the S-U-N. The S-O-N is the true light of the world that lighted every man's heart. So you see, that provokes him more to jealousy than anything else, to worship the wrong light. Do you know every society that has worshipped the S-U-N has been destroyed? The Egyptians worshipped the S-U-N, and their kingdom came down. They don't build them to go pyramids anymore, do they? They don't have that kind of gold to put in the pyramid. It got brought down. The Indians that worshipped the S-U-N, the, the, the white man came over here and took everything they had. The Mexicans that worship the S-U-N. The white man came over here and took all their stuff, the gold and everything, and, 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 and conquered them. Every society that worshiped the S-U-N got crumbled. 
God don't stand for it. So if we start worshiping the S-U-N today, that provokes him to more jealousy than anything else. Have you all read this for yourself? Do you see it? Do you understand? He said, I'll show you great. I'll show you greater. I'll show you greater than that. Now let me show you what's greater than all of it. Worship of the S-U-N. Verse 17. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? It is a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here. For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Verse 18. Therefore will I also deal in my fury. My eyes shall not spare neither will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. So what is my warning to the church today? Worship God. Amen. Don't worship the idols. Don't worship the blessings. Don't worship the sun. Hey, that makes it matter than anything because he's the true light of the world. He won't share his glory with nobody. He won't share his light with anybody. Worship God. So that's why we're here today, to worship God, to lift up his name, to glorify his name. Don't worship the blessings that God blessed you with. I do want you to be thankful because it says in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen? I thank you for my wife, but I don't worship my wife. I thank you for my children, but I don't worship my children. I thank you for them vehicles of mine, but I don't worship my vehicles. I thank you for a nice warm house, oh God, but I don't worship my nice warm house. I thank you for the clothes on my back, oh God, but I don't worship my clothes. I thank you for the shoes on my feet, but I don't worship my shoes. I thank you for my, 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 my health and my strength, but I don't worship my health and my strength. But God says in the last bit, the word of God says they'll be worshipers of themselves more than lovers of themselves, more than lovers of God. Worshiping the creature more than the creator. We're in perilous times. Now the land is filled with what? What did the word say? You fill the land with violence. Violence on every hand. We don't know who's going to snap next, do we? We don't know who's going to bring a gun and shoot nobody next. We, we just know it's just happening all over the place. Now it's in France and, and all over. We're going to pray God put his guardian angels around about us. We're going to pray God that he protect us from the perils. We're going to pray God that he gives us salvation in the midst of devastation. That God brings us and rapture us about it is. And we're never going to worship the S-U-N. We're going to worship the what? S-O-N. See, the S-U-N may not be shining out there, but the S-U-N is shining in here. Let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. What's his name? Hey, let the true light of the world shine. Don't worship the S-U-N. That provokes God to more jealousy than anything else that we can do. Did you read it for yourself? Is it clear? He said great, greater, greater, and then greater. So we're going to worship the S-O-N, which is the king. Now, let's go to... Let's go to my conclusion, which is Psalms 121. Psalms chapter 121. Psalms chapter 121, right here. There it is. And this is what David says. He says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Verse 2, my help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He said, I'm not going to lift up my eyes to the sun, 
I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. But just in case you don't understand, my help comes from who? The Lord. The Lord. Click on Lord. That may be that Jehovah we we're talking about there. Capital L-O-R-D. I might even work it, work it in right now. Capital L-O-R-D is just a little slow, bear with us. I don't know what happened. But, but he says, I will lift up. Everybody say, I will. I will. Hey, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. I will worship the king in 2015. I will obey the king in 2015. I will. Praise the king in 2015. I will shout to the king in 2015. I will sing to the king in 2015. I will worship the king in 2015. I will. See, it's got to be a personal thing. It's got to be a private thing. It's got to be something that you do without somebody forcing you to do. Say, I will one more time. I will. Hey, I will. And it comes from that Greek word, I mean Hebrew word, Y-H-W-H, -H, Yahweh or Jehovah. It says the self-existent or eternal name of God, the Lord, Jehovah. Jehovah equals the existing one. So Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. Jesus equals Jehovah, which equals the existing one. You can put an equal sign all between them. Now, now it becomes a compound equality. Jesus equals Jehovah equals existing one. See, because if, if Jesus equals Jehovah, you can put an equal sign right here now and put Jesus. Jesus equals Jehovah equals the existing one. Because Jesus equals Jehovah is salvation. Is that clear? There's an equal sign between them. Equality. Is that clear enough for you? Yes, sir. All right, now let's go back. Now, Jesus' name is not in the Old Testament. It wasn't revealed until the New Testament. So that's why it's not in the Old Testament. Verse 3, or verse 2, one more time. My help coming from the Lord, and let me remind you, which made heaven and earth. That's the God I'm talking about. The one who created heaven. The one who created the earth. The one who created me. The one who created you. Not the idols, not the things that they tell you in the mythology and the books, textbooks, not the Big Bang, but I worship the one who created it all. See, they're trying to steal creation from him, they, aren't they? They're trying to say he didn't do it. And they're teaching us he didn't do it, aren't they? They got a problem with giving him the glory for creating the heaven and the earth. They got a problem with it. But I got a problem with, with evolution, my friend. I just can't see all this coming out of nothing. I can't see everything making itself. I, that takes more faith than the, the faith to believe in God. <laughs> it takes more faith to believe that God created this world than it takes to believe the world created itself out of nothing. I believe God did it. Everybody say, God did it. God. Hey, do you believe it? Worship God. Don't worship science. Worship God. Verse 3. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Aren't you glad he don't go to sleep on you? Aren't you glad he don't get tired? Aren't you glad that he's got you on his mind? Verse 3. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The S-U-N, the sun, shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night, because he's got the sun in his hand. He's got control of the sun. He's got control of the moon. He's got control of the stars. He's got control of the atmosphere. He's got control of the universe. He's got control of everything in your life, if you just believe it. Do you believe he's in control? Do you believe he's greater than the S-U-N? Do you believe he's greater than the moon? Do you believe he's greater than the stars? Do you believe he's greater than your problems? Do you believe he's greater than the strife? I believe he's the greatest. Verse 7. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Hey! 
I'm not worried about the bummers. I'm not worried about the terrorists. I'm not worried about the antichrist like I said last week. I'm not worried about the haters. I'm not worried about those who want to destroy me. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. All means 100%, doesn't it? So you can leave rest assured, God got my back. Hey! The sun shall not smite me by day. The moon shall not smite me by night. The Lord is on my side, and he's more than those that be against me. God is on my side. He shall preserve thy soul. Verse 8, let's read it together. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. So in 2015, he still got your back. In 2015, he's still the strongest. In 2015, he's still the greatest. In 2015, he's still anointed. In 2015, he's still the appointed one to bring us through. Do you believe it? I will lift up my eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer my soul to be moved. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even, hey, <laughs> even forevermore, he shall preserve thy soul. Hey! From this time forth and even forevermore. So perilous times may be here, but I'm in the tower now. Perilous times may be here, but I'm on the Lord's side now. Perilous times may be here, but I'm trusting in Jesus. Perilous times may be here, but greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Perilous times may be here, but I'm on the Lord's side now. And I'm, he's more than a comfort through him that loved me. I mean, I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. Are you on the Lord's side this morning? Now, I got a little illustration on my PowerPoint. Let me show you. Worship the king. Go back to the PowerPoint. I got on through the conclusion. Now, there's the earth. Here we are, way over here. There all the knuckleheads are. There's South America. There's North America. We're right over there, right? This guy that was worshiping the sun was over here in Israel, which is right in here somewhere over by Africa, right by the temple. But we're way over here on this side. Then here comes the sun. Now look at what the sun really looks like when you see it. What does that look like? Doesn't that look like fire? Thank you, Chloe. Uh, uh, Chloe. That looks like fire, doesn't it? That thing is on fire. Now why would you worship that? That may be somebody's future home. Don't that look like that could be hell? That thing has been burning and never been out. It's been burning since so, so what we call the beginning of time. So that's evidence something can burn forever and not burn up, isn't it? I mean, they say it's going to eventually burn out, but it hasn't burned up yet, has it? So as far as we're concerned, it's going to burn forever. <laughs> if it burns your lifetime, I don't know. I'm not trying to re rebuke science or anything. But it's been burning since the first day it hadn't went out. And they say it's got another four billion years in it. <laughs> Sounds like forever to me, four billion. Who's going to be around to dispute it? Yes. Uh, you know how long it's going to last. But guess what? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Worship the king. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me, sister, in his hands. He's got you and me, daughter, in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Look at that. <coughs> Who's the greatest? I just did this little illustration to show you that S-O-N is greater than the S-U-N. He's got the whole world in his hands. Worship God. 
Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. Now let me talk to our audience that's out there. I hope that gives you a visual visualization of what I'm trying to say here. Worship the King. And those of you who are logged in, we thank you for logging in. And we hope and pray that God has given us something today that has blessed you, that has encouraged you, and has blessed you and given you a mind to worship God. Don't worship the blessings God has given you. Don't worship the suns and the solar system out there. Worship God. Give him the glory. Lift up his name because he says he's a jealous God. He will not share his glory with anyone. So we're going to pray with you right now and pray for you. If you've been worshiping the wrong king, if you've been worshiping the wrong God, you can make it right today. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for those who are logged in right now. We pray that you would give them a mind to repent of their sins, to get baptized in Jesus' name, and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. With the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues, save them the Bible way, O oh God. Help them to start worshiping the S-O-N and not the S-U-N. Help them to start worshiping you, O oh God, and not the blessings you've given them. Help them to put you in a proper place, O oh God. We pray according to your will right now. We thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Remember, worship the king in 2015. God bless you. And we are great power, great grace. Let's just put that up there. Remember, worship God, the S-O-N, not the S-U-N. Thank you for viewing. May God bless you and keep you according to number 624. And we are, let's say it together, expecting our great God to do great things for us. Great power and great grace. Acts chapter 4, verse 33. Look at her. Go ahead, guys. Let's give her a hand. Thank you for viewing in Jesus' name. God bless you.